Today, a few different lessons we're going to go over. So Paul's going to lead it off. He's going to start us off strong. And he's going to actually cover how you can get started in the ATM business this week. And right after that, I'm going to go over the BTMs, Bitcoin ATMs. So I'm going to cover the path to $10,000 monthly in the Bitcoin ATM business because that is achievable. From there, we're then going to cover something very special. And we worked on this. I mean, you think Canada took a while? This took us almost a year to get this working. So we're going to cover exactly how you can get double your profit in the ATM business, guys. Man, I got to get used to that, dude. That that thing is amazing. Like the intro, I, I get a couple of texts like, hey, dude, what, what is this, a concert? <laughs> <laughs> Got to switch it up. It's 2023. I told you guys we're taking it to the moon, so we got to switch it up. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Hey, guys. I'm uh, Paul Alex, founder of ATMtogether.com and ATM Business for Beginners. Welcome. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome, welcome, guys. I'm Getem Yonas, CEO of ATMtogether.com. You guys see me on a few more lives. We are Grace. Paul decided to come on today because we have a special presentation. But before we get into that, guys, we want to know exactly where you guys are at right now because we want to know where we're reaching out to. We got to see if the people can hear us. So comment below what city and state you guys are located at right now so we know exactly where you're at. Absolutely. And we're actually pre-recording this for the YouTube channel, guys. If you haven't checked us out on YouTube, make sure to check us out at www.youtube.com backslash at ATM together, guys. Free training, free value. You guys will love it. 100%, 100%. We just launched that YouTube channel. I think we're at like maybe 500 subscribers now. I remember when we just launched, we only had like three or four subscribers. And we're like, we're going to get there. Just like our Facebook group, we're at like 55,000 followers. It doesn't happen overnight, guys. That's like one of the most important things we can tell you. But I don't want to take too much time. So let's see. If you guys are live right now, you're actually watching us. And you're like, hey, we love the sounds. We love the backgrounds. We love everything. Comment live below just so we know you guys are actually live. And here's the thing. If you're not live, it's not a big deal because we understand you're busy. So if you're watching a replay, whether it's a week from now, two days from now, or even on YouTube, comment replay below. We want to see where everyone's at. And at the end of the day, guys, this helps with the algorithms because, as you know, everything's around algorithms. So if we can reach more people and the most people possible, it's great for everyone. Free information for everyone, guys. Right? Absolutely, guys. Hey, hey, guys. If you guys remember any of the Fresh and Fit episodes, actually, where they were talking about ETMs, we're actually going back to Miami to be on Fresh and Fit Part Two. Dos in Spanish. So. Gadam's actually going to take lead on this one, guys. I'll be in the background waving my hands in the air like I don't care. But <laughs> with that being said, guys, make sure to check us out on Fresh and Fit. It's going to happen January 23rd at 7 p.m. Pacific Central Time, guys. And that's going to be on YouTube. Just go ahead and type in Fresh and Fit, and they're going to have the little uh, timer on there that you can actually reserve your slot to watch the show. It's going to be good, guys. It's going to be good. I'm actually I'm very excited because here's the thing. So... And if Paul hasn't mentioned this, I mentioned this last week. So we want, I know you guys are live, but I want to find out how many of you guys are actually in Canada right now? Because we have a very special announcement. Okay. So we worked long and hard for this. This took about eight months to get this in the works because, you know, Canada, man, they have their own import taxes, everything. So we're actually launching ATM automation in Canada. This spawned off because Paul actually has family in Canada. He's like, we can't keep our Canadian brothers and sisters out. So if you're interested and, in, you know, you just maybe just want a little more info, right? To understand like how you can scale your business internationally because current clients, if you decide you want to expand to Canada, you have that opportunity too. If you just want a little more info, maybe another live training, comment Canada below. We want to find out exactly who's from Canada and who's to be interested, right? Absolutely. And guys, I'm telling you right now, if you are in Canada, make sure to get on an informational call with our team. It is a really great affiliate partner we have in Canada. Oh my God. The guy will break your uh, his back for you if you were to call him in the middle of the night. If you have a technical problem, I mean, 24-7 support. The guy is amazing. Shout out to Bass. Yeah, it's, it's going to be phenomenal because literally we set the standard. If you guys know and you're based out of the U.S., you know our processing partner, our tech guru. I mean, anything you want to name them, Mike sets the standard. So you right off the bat, we're trying to find somebody to work with. We're like, man, how are we going to have somebody that's just like Mike, right? But now we need to just have somebody like Mike with an accent. That's it. So it works out, guys. 
Well, yeah, let man. Me get, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's it's hard to find a good working relationship with processing companies, guys. And you got to mm -hmm. think about it. How many mentees, how many clients are these processing companies actually mentoring, right? And if they're able to handle them, because what's the point of working with somebody if they're not able to get back to you 24 seven like we do, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's what you guys got to look for. You guys got to look at who you vibe with, what relationship you have, and who's going to have your back. Exactly, exactly. It's, um, I see something uh, special. I think I saw, saw Mike in there. He's like, gotta be like Mike, right? <laughs> gotta be like Mike. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, guys. But let's, let's get to it because we are actually running out of time and we have a phenomenal presentation today, guys. It's going to be very special. So today, a few different lessons we're going to go over. Okay. So Paul's going to lead it off. He's going to start us off strong and he's going to actually cover how you can get started in the ATM business this week because it's January. You still have time available, guys. Take advantage of your New Year's resolution. Paul's going to break that down for you. And then right after that, I'm going to go over the BTMs, Bitcoin ATMs. So I'm going to cover the path to $10,000 monthly in the Bitcoin ATM business because that is achievable. Okay. From there, we're then going to cover something very special. And we worked on this. I mean, you think Canada took a while? This took us almost a year to get this working. So we're going to cover exactly how you can get double your profit in the ATM business, guys. Okay? So this is going to be a phenomenal presentation. Paul's going to start it off. But remember, we're pre-recording this for YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and like. Hit the like button. And I think it's going to be like below our video editor. She's phenomenal. But Paul, lead it off for us. Absolutely, guys. So let's go ahead and jump start into my background, guys. If you guys don't know me, my name is Paul Alex, founder of ATMtogether.com. I launched ATM Together in January of 2021. With that being said, I've been in the ATM industry for a little bit over six years, 30 locations in my actual personal tangible business. I'm based out of San Francisco, California. All my Bay Area people, hey, Tell me what's up in the comments, guys. Go Niners. You know what's up. Niner faithful, guys. Don't be hating if you're a Raider fan. I just got to call you guys out. With that being said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson. So how can you start your ATM business this week? Well, one thing I always tell people, especially when I talk to anyone, whenever I first meet someone and they're like, Paul, how are you able to transition from law enforcement to actual ATMs? It's like night and day. It's it's a, a, you could say a high intensity job, especially uh, based on what I used to do, guys. I, uh, I worked almost every single unit you can think of in the police department. Man, they, 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 they even made me their mascot at one time. I probably volunteered for it on overtime. Trust me, guys, I worked overtime uh, almost, uh, I believe, every other day, guys. 60 to 100 hour work weeks. I just... It's in my blood. My parents always told me growing up, hey, Paul, you got to work hard, especially when you have a good career and you're making a nice paycheck. That way you could get your house, you could get your dream car, you could get your vacations. But what they didn't tell me is that sustainability. That's something that I always go into, sustainability. Working 60 to 100 hour work weeks is great in your 20s. Trust me, guys. I'm uh, actually about to turn 35. I know. I'm like, oh, no. I'm actually happy because it's actually some of the best times in my life in my 30s because I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot, personal experience, growth. It's phenomenal. It's a good time to be in your 30s. But with that being said, not to take away from my 20s, in my 20s, I actually learned quite a bit, guys. And uh, with that being said, I got a lot of personal life experience. Seven years in law enforcement, working undercover. Um, I was a, a, a patrol officer for my first year, got voluntold to go into um, what they call the crime reduction team, which is like, a, you could say like a gang unit. Um, and then from there, going to a narcotics task force and then special victims, working with the youth, working with uh, Vice, uh, with, the, with the FBI task force, all that jazz, guys. I got to go to Quantico. They ship me out everywhere you could think of. My, my life, uh, as far as in law enforcement, was like a straight up movie. Not kidding, guys. I sometimes would go home and be like, wow, I can't believe I do this for a living. It's insane. But I was only getting three to four hours uh, of sleep a day, guys. I was running off of the adrenaline. And ultimately, it just, you get burnt out. You get burnt out. Something's going to happen. Either you're, um, you're mental, you're physical, or, or you're spiritual. It's, it's going to go down, guys. We're human, right? So with that, I started looking into different side hustles. I've always been a serial entrepreneur since the age of 18. 
And I've, <laughs> you could say I've done everything. I've done uh, e-commerce before, you know, this whole Amazon automation, uh, this whole gurus on, on, you know, social media uh, appeared. We're talking about back in, in 2008. That's when I was online trying to do the whole e-commerce thing with like HTML codes and all that jazz, guys. I was investing my hard, uh, earning money uh, as I was working. Uh, my first corporate job in America as sales, and then I eventually got promoted as a sales manager, uh, selling cleaning chemicals to to uh, restaurants and all that before I was in law enforcement. So trust me, I have a little bit of life experience, just a little bit, okay? But that life experience showed me a lot, and it showed me that you have to make your money work for you. But you have to invest it into something sustainable as an asset, okay? And that's something that I didn't learn in my 20s because I come from humble beginnings. I don't come from money, guys. Everything that I've built in this life is from these two hands in here, okay? I've been able to build absolutely everything off of ideas, vision, and execution. So with that being said, um, <clears throat> worked quite a bit in law enforcement, transitioned into serial entrepreneurship the last two years in law enforcement. And this was, it's going to be a few years now, guys. Uh, I think two years now, it's, it's been a complete two years that I'm a full-time entrepreneur. We're talking about like, Hey, there ain't no paycheck coming in here if I ain't producing. Right. But that's just the way it goes, guys. I have assets my ATMs that actually are working for me. And as they work for me, they actually cover my living expenses. So in reality, even though the ATMs wasn't what got me to become a, a multi seven figure earner, it started me off. That was my vehicle that started me off from the mentality of an employee to a CEO. And don't let anyone fool you and say, man, Paul, Paul, he, man, he ain't get rich off of ATMs and da, da, da. No guys. No. My story is the ATMs was the vehicle that got me started onto entrepreneurship that actually got me to be able to invest into different sources of income, which now I have created, I have executed, and now I employ Dozens of people across the United States, guys, and it's a wonderful thing. As you guys are going to see later on this year, I'm working on some wonderful projects that you guys are going to see and be a part of, many of you, and ultimately, you guys are going to be like, wow, that dude, like, if if someone asks, you're going to be like, yeah, he was in law enforcement, and then he transitioned to ATMs, and then to this other business, and then to this other business, and then to this other business, and they're going to be like, how the heck did he do that? And they're probably going to be like, oh, he's he's one of those wannabe gurus or whatnot. No, guys, this is reality. This is how I built my fortune. This is how I built wealth, okay? So what I'm going to do right now in this lesson, I'm actually going to show you step by step on what you can do if you are ready to go and venture with ATMs. If not, that's okay, guys. You can still message me. We can still chat. We can still have good times. And ultimately, trust me, guys, I wear a lot of hats. I know a lot of things about business. So this is not my only source of income. If you guys want to talk about real estate, if you guys want to talk about consulting, if you guys want to talk about crypto, uh, BTMs, which is one of our newest offers, um, uh, cash ATMs. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Merchant services now, right? So I, at the end of the day, I'm a jack of all trades now, right? Get <laughs> I was like, hey, what, what? What? you're like, what are you, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? But that's just what it is, guys. It's what I work on and I execute. That's the only thing that makes me different from every other Joe Blow or uh, Mickey Mouse out there on the internet, guys. Okay. I'm in my mid thirties. And at the end of the day, I just execute and I keep my head low. Okay. Same thing I did in the, in law enforcement. I was a top cop for a reason. And I can say that proudly. I don't say that to be arrogant. I don't say that to be proud. Okay. I say that because I was, I executed, I took murderers, rapists. I took the worst of the worst outside. When I went to the street, that was my job. And I did it proudly guys. Okay, so that's how I'm going to start this off. Now, to get into ATMs, 
Now, with ATMs, guys, very first thing, and this is going to be for beginners, guys. I'm sorry. This is ATM. This is for beginners. So I can't uh, give you guys some top advanced secret strategy that's going to 10x your ATM business. If you guys want that type of strategy, then I'm going to tell you one thing right now. You need to go and um, ask Gianni Santino. He just did a remarkable live for our clients earlier today. It was fire. Okay. Fire. It was one of the best presentations I've seen in a long time. Sorry, get them. And <laughs> at, the, at the end of the Stop day, the guys, <laughs> you guys are missing out if you're not tuning in to watch him. Okay. But let's start off with this. If you want to start your business this week and you want to try to do it on your own, this is exactly the information that I'm going to provide to you. This has nothing to do with what we provide as our program. This is just free value information for you. Okay. So if I wanted to do the LLC and the EIN, top um, hands down, guys, inkfile.com. And that's going to be I N C F I L E.com. It is the best website. I have done three, count them, three LLCs in the past six months from this website. It takes me no longer than 15 minutes. And it's remarkable. It's a one stop shop, guys. That's why I love it. If you want a virtual address to conceal your actual personal address, you guys can actually get it from this website. If you guys need the EIN done as well, you could get it from this website. If you need your paperwork expedited, you could get it from this website. So I actually recommend this to everybody. I've, I've, I've had absolutely everybody, family, friends, um, strangers walking down the street. Hey, Go to inkfile.com if you're trying to start your LLC because it's the best thing. And trust me, guys, I'm not getting paid to say this. This is truly the best website to do it. And that's all I got to say about that, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to business bank accounts. Now, what business bank accounts is very tricky, especially in 2022, 2023. Um, you'll get a lot of greedy ATM deployers. And it's sad. And it's sad to say this, that don't want any new deployers on here because they want to secure their bank locations, specifically here in Los Angeles and in California and Southern California. And with, with that, I mean, there's enough to go around. You know, there's millions of businesses, millions of, of lo locations and opportunity for everybody. I'm not greedy like that, guys. This is an opportunity for everyone to absolutely grow. So I'm going to provide you this information. All you need to do in the next day or two is execute the information that I'm telling you, okay? So the first one, if you haven't been writing this, make sure to write this down, guys. LLC, E-I-N, inkfile.com. That's number one. Number two, business bank account. Now, why is the business account very difficult to actually open? Well, it's because it's a high-risk business, guys. If you haven't watched, um, what is it, uh, Ozark with money laundering and the cartel and all that jazz, all that fun stuff that I used to investigate back in the day, right? Um, I did a little bit of asset and forfeiture for all my first responders in Leo back there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing, guys. But ultimately, uh, it has to do with money laundering. So the banks have compliance departments that they actually verify your actual documents to make sure that you're a legitimate company. Not to say that you're a bad person, not to point you out. No, they do this to absolutely everybody. And that's just the way it is, guys, because of social media. With social media, I just do retract guys. Um, I started using social media back in mid 2020 when, um, and I'm talking about, I wasn't on social media for like seven years. Uh, MySpace. We're talking about when you would play that little, that little song on, on your profile and then you come, you'd be like, Oh my God, look, look at his pictures. Oh, what was he doing? You know? No. That, yeah. That was my era guys. I didn't have all of this information that everyone has now on the internet, especially on their phone. It's crazy. So I jumped back on mid 2020 and then I start seeing all these different groups on Facebook pop up regarding the ATM business. And I'm like, what is this? This is crazy. So I go in there and I just see, man, newbies getting slaughtered left to right. So I'm like, man, let me start my own community for, for beginners and let me actually nurture them to actually be able to do it on their own or come work with us. And that's it. So ultimately, guys, what you got to look for is the competition. The, the, the competition now is getting fierce within the ATM industry. And not to deter anyone from doing this, but it's facts. 
California, for example, okay? In California, it's extremely difficult to find banks, okay? My team, we find banks for probably one or two clients every, I would say, three months. We're able to do that, okay? And it's because we have a networking connection with a banker or whatnot. Can't, can't really say the bank, but we do, okay? Other than that, we can't really enroll clients in California the, like the way we would want to. Otherwise, it'd be it, it'd be good to go. Okay, guys. Now, you have to go ahead and prospect your own banks. What do I mean by that? I mean, go on Yelp, go on Google. No matter what city or state you guys are at, you guys are going to want to go ahead and actually type in um, credit unions. Uh, uh, Credit unions, smaller banks, stay away from the big three, which is going to be Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Chase, guys. I'm telling you right now, I have bank accounts with every single bank. Um, those banks, they have actually shut me down in the past. Nothing against them. They're great banks, great bankers. But for the ATM business, it's a no-go, guys. I, it's even a running joke with my 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 uh, my personal banker. He's just like, "Hey, Paul, we're we're not going to open a uh, business checking account for one of your ATMs, right?" And I'm like, "Ha ha ha, no! It's gonna you know be for like real estate or other investments or whatnot." But I do have another bank that I've used that I'm grandfathered in. Okay. And I'm able to use that for my tangible ATM business. So it's not an issue for me, but for any newbie coming in, it's, you're going to have some type of difficulty. Okay. Now the way you go over this is by having proper documentation, knowing what to say and working with the right company. Okay. And the reason why I say this is because you're going to need three things. Number one, you're going to need to know exactly how this business is facilitated, okay? So if the banker actually asks any of you guys, okay, what does your business do? You're not going to say, well, it's an ATM and I make money off of people taking money off my machine. No, don't, 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 don't say that because they're going to be like, what? Are you like a MSB? A MSB, guys, it's a money service business. Money service business, for example, are like a MoneyGram, a Western Union. You are not wiring or transferring money to other countries, other states. You're not doing that. You're not an actual banking system, okay? You're just facilitating money coming out of the actual machine. And then the processing network, which I'm going to get into in just a minute, actually facilitates that with the banking network who is authorized to do that. Okay. Now, with that being said, you want to know exactly what to say. There's this one liner that I always tell everyone to use. And trust me, you guys might think it's funny, but it works. Okay. The one thing you want to say and the only thing you want to say is when the banker asks, well, Paul, what exactly does the ATM business do? You want to go ahead and you want to say, well, I want to collect the commissions from my actual ATM. And that's it. They're going to be like, oh, okay, simple enough. And then they're going to either tell you yes or no. If they tell you yes, great. You got approved. Now, the two other steps you want to bring in proper identification. You want to make sure you have your LLC and your EIN. And then the second item, the processing agreement. Majority of you guys are probably, if you've never seen any of our presentations or this is the first time you're listening about the ETM business, you're probably like, what's processing? Processing is the network that facilitates your transactions between the ATM, the banking network, and the actual client's bank, guys. Okay. So the processing company and your supplier for the ATM, because you want, to for that company to actually facilitate everything for you like a one-stop shop it just makes it easier on your end so you don't have to deal with multiple people you want to go ahead and you actually want to get some type of agreement stating that they're doing business with you ahead of time the reason why is because when you give that contract or that piece of paper saying that the actual processing company for a good example there's a company called switch commerce like a light switch if you were to get like a processing agreement from them, right, and take that to the bank, they're going to be like, okay, this client is squared away. They're going to be like, okay, they're actually a legitimate business owner. But if you're going in there saying, oh, I'm not too sure, I don't know, um, let me get back to you on that, then that's just 
it doesn't look right. And it doesn't sit right with the bank, especially this being a high risk business, guys. And during these times, you have to be on your J, your job, guys. Okay. So make sure that you guys follow those steps and you'll get approval of a bank. I promise you. And don't quit. Be confident. You're a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. At the end of the day, you have to make it happen and you have to execute. That's what we have to learn before you earn, right? All right, guys, let's go on to processing and supplier now. And we're moving along, guys. That's it, right? Success, love, speed. So processing and supplier. A few golden nuggets, guys, okay? Now, I don't want you guys to forget this, all right? When I was initially buying ATMs, I dealt with one of the biggest corporations in the market, okay? They actually, uh, they dominate the market. I don't know if they still dominate it now. Uh, may maybe so. Some of the current companies, they grew, so they might be at the same level as them. But this company at the time uh, was a massive corporation. They were all over. And I was like, you know what? I see their ATMs all over. I'm just going to go deal with them. So I went and I dealt with them. And um, they gave me a deal up front to buy a quantity of ATMs. But on the back end, see, I was a newbie. I was a newbie and I had a chip on my shoulder and I listened to one of those guys that said, Hey, just do it on yourself. It's free. You know, don't, don't pay anybody. Don't mentor nobody or don't pay a mentor to, to guide you because, um, you know, you'll save a lot of money like that. Well, that, that, that simple advice that I got from whoever cost me about $7,000. And the reason why it cost me $7,000 is because simply that I went ahead and I signed a contract, a service agreement that locked me in for three years. And that company was taking a large portion of my surcharge profits. Surcharge profits, it's the actual fees that you guys charge the clients to borrow your money that's coming outside the ATM, guys. With that being said, you don't want that to happen to you. Right now in 2023, competition between processing companies and ATM suppliers is fierce. It's so fierce. You will hear a lot of the small time suppliers and processing companies bad mouthing the larger corporations and the larger companies, guys. I mean, you won't ever hear from ATM together. Trust me, we don't need to. All right. Our social proof and results can talk for themselves. Our clients. We have their back. They have our back. At the end of the day, I'll tell you this, okay? When you call us, we will be there. When you need help, we will be there. We don't let any person down. Just like when I was back and I had a partner, I wouldn't let that person down. They have my back. I have their back. Exactly. Code three, code three cover, please. <laughs> and Gano's going to play that. That's if you guys don't know what Code 33 is, uh, back in the day, back in the day when uh, you used to get into altercation or let's say you just on viewed uh, a murder suspect or you on viewed a shooting or maybe you saw somebody getting robbed with a gun, which to be honest, I used to see it all the time, guys. I was in one of the most dangerous areas in the city that I was sworn to protect. And I was okay with that. I was okay with that because it was my job. And I chose that city specifically because I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be a cop, I'm going to be a cop. Like, I'm not going to be over here writing no reports, taking just uh, reports for stolen vehicles. No, I want to take the worst of the worst out because that's the type of person I am. I don't back down from no one. So with that being said, guys, code 33 would be what well, we would hit on the radio when we'd be like, hey, we need silence. And then typically once you hit code 33, you ask for either backup or help because you're in a dangerous situation. So code 33 right there. That's the sound. If you guys hear that, that's to tell you we have your back. OK, now let's continue with a few more golden nuggets, guys. Now. You got to really ask when you go get the bids. And I recommend every single one of you guys, even though you guys may like us, even though you guys may be like fans of ATM together, man, that dude Paul's cool as fuck. I urge you to go get bids. I urge you to go and actually see how these other companies do business. Because I'm going to tell you right now, 
They don't have the infrastructure, guys. I've been there. I've done it. This is not a presentation to pump up anyone. This is a presentation of transparency to tell you how it is right now in the market. If you see anyone bad-mouthing anyone, okay, that got to tell you something. You don't see someone successful bad-mouthing the little guys. Think about that. I didn't bad mouth the, the, the cops that were in their car sleeping or the cops that were uh, writing the reports uh, all day, avoiding the dangerous calls. No, I wasn't talking about, I was busy putting in work. I was busy taking those bad guys to jail. That's just what it was. So at the end of the day, you got to realize who you really want to go with, somebody that has your back, somebody that has the infrastructure, somebody that has a team to support what you need, okay? Somebody who's a jack of all trades that actually is successfully doing it with social proof. Or are you going to go with somebody who just badmouths somebody else and then says, hey, I could do it for, uh, for cheaper because I could save you a dollar. That's what happened to me, guys. I fell victim for that. I went and I followed the advice of someone who had low standards and was saying, hey, you can save a dollar if you go with the large company or you go with that large company six years ago and they'll hook you up with the ATMs. But they never told me that on the back end, I'm going to sign a three-year contract, which they were taking a large sum of my money every single transaction. And then on top of that, I had to pay $7,000 to get out of it my second year. I was pissed. I was like, this is the last time I ever listen to someone who is not where I want to be at. And there's a lot of people like that on the internet, straight up. I always tell people, or whenever I get somebody, people like, oh man, you can't, Cap, here, get him, play the cap song or play the cap sound. Cap, cap. Sound you always get cap. people saying, you always get people saying cap, which I hate that word. I hate that word. But the reason why I hate it because it's it's, it's not my generation. I just say quit, quit lying or, or whatever, you know, it's nor some normal stuff. But when people are like cap, cap, and then I show social proof or I actually articulate my words. Then that's when they get shut down and they disappear. So make sure, guys, that you guys get the bids. Make sure that you actually ask, hey, can I talk to at least five, 10 of your clients? Because if they don't even got five, 10 of their clients and they're here promising you the world that they're going to save you this and that, and you could do this for free and you can find information here and you could do this and that, trust me, those are the ones that are not going to pick up the phone when you need them the most. Guaranteed, we get dozens upon dozens of people that actually left smaller processing companies to come work with us because of the infrastructure. And that's not to say that we're the best, but that's just reality. That's what I'm saying. Tra full transparency, guys. Go and get your bids. Get your bids. Uh, even though you guys might like how we roll on everything, get your bids, okay? I got you on that one. Now, value. You got to think about it like this. And to go back to what I'm saying, I'm going to cut this short and then we're going to go into ATMs, guys. And then finally, locations because Gadam has a phenomenal presentation about a special, special um, project that we've been working on, guys. And it's going to bring a lot of value to the actual market for you guys, okay? Would you rather have a mentor who has successfully accomplished multiple goals multiple, uh, obtain a level of success, whether it's financial, whether it is freedom, whether it is mindset, whether it is personality, whether it is, I don't know, anything that you want, or do you want to be mentored by someone who's just barely making it, scraping by, you're almost at the same level as them. No, I want to be in the room where I'm actually feel uncomfortable. I want to be in the room with those multi, multi millionaires because those are the guys that are going to have you level up and you can't level up unless you get uncomfortable guys. That's just the reality of it. Okay. Now 
Let's go into the ATMs. When you're new, make sure you get a brand new ATM, guys. And I'm telling you this from experience, guys. I have bought a used ATM before in the past, my first year. And uh, luckily, I had bought it from a client that I replaced his ATM with one of my ATMs as a uh, part of the deal. Okay. What I learned is that the ATM was getting used so much from the outside. The shell looked beautiful. It was spotless. He took care of it. The guy would just spray Windex on it every day, just, you know, clean it and all that jazz. But the internals, oh my God. I couldn't even sell the thing. That's how jacked up it was, guys. So make sure when you're new, go with brand new. It's just less problems, guys. And we have a lot of veterans in the actual group. We have a lot of veterans that actually work for us in the ATM industry. And they will tell you flat out from experience, guys. Okay, Mike, he currently has over 120 ATMs. Uh, Gianni, he has over 18. Uh, no, no, 20. No, no, it's 30. I think like 32, 33 uh, ATMs now because he landed the Dunkin' Donuts and he's slowly but surely building it up, guys. And then me, 30 ATMs. Um, uh, Brandon, Brandon got like four or five different routes. Like it's crazy. But at the end of the day, we have a wealth of knowledge, guys, to help you. Okay, just reach out. Reach out and we'll talk to you and we'll give you the advice that you guys need, okay? Even if you don't go with us, just you want to ask our opinion? Ask us away. We're here. This is what we do for a living. All right, number two, ask your mentor. And this is super important, guys. Ask your mentor if they're actually going to show you how to program the ATM. And this is super important, guys. This is very important. The reason why I say that is because me, myself, I'm not tech savvy. I actually, initially, I had paid a technician to come out and teach me in person because I'm a visual learner, right? But now with the internet and all that jazz, you have videos, you have Zoom, you could do what I used to do now, like in, in your living room. So it's phenomenal. Okay. So make sure to ask whoever you're buying the ATM from, whether it's from us, whether it's from whoever you want, if they're going to train you one-on-one. -on -one. And if they're not, mm, I would go ahead and go with someone else. Okay. Number three, support. Very due diligence, guys. Black and white, I'm a straight shooter. That's just the way I roll. And I would tell you to be the same, especially when you're going in there and you want to deal with a company. Ask them, what is the support availability? Okay? If they're not willing to support you 24-7, 2023, there's so much competition out there right now, guys. They need to be able to support you 24-7. I invested thousands of dollars hiring new employees to cover my clients 24 seven. So they shoot a message. Guess what? They're getting a response. If these other guys are not doing that, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Problems. Because here's the thing. Everybody lives in different time zones. And at the end of the day, you want to be covered. Okay, guys. So make sure you do your due diligence and you actually ask them, Hey, like how many current like mentees do you have? How many like clients do you have? Can I see some social proof? Like you're saying you could do all this, but where, where, like, where, where's it at? You know, and you don't see that guys. I'm telling you right now, a lot of these different companies, not to bad mouth nobody, but a lot of these companies won't show no social proof. Okay. Think about that. And then number four, cash flow. All right. And I stand by this guys in order to test your ATM. Okay. The way I started the business, I put one to $3,000 inside of the ATM. Now, here is the transition with putting more money inside of the ATM for transparency. If you have a location that generates quite a bit of revenue, okay, quite a bit of transactions, that one to 3,000 might only cover a week. And then what ends up happening for all my newbies, that one to 3,000 gets pulled out of your machine, right? The processing network is going to go ahead and actually grab that from the clients that you let borrow the money plus your surcharge fee. So if you put one to 3,000 and you have a great location, it might only last you a few days, a week, and then you could go load it up with more cash if you want. Now, if you don't want to go to the location two, three times a month, that is fine. You can load it up with more cash. At the end of the day, guys, I see it as it 
being your savings account inside of that machine. You are making your money work for you. At the end of the day, I even have this reel that I posted today. I mean, I remember when my parents were like, save, 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 right? Count all your pennies. And I really counted my pennies because I remember when I had $20,000 in my bank account and it only made me two cents. And I told my mom, I was like, yeah, mom, I'm really counting my pennies. <laughs> I only counted two cents, guys. So that just tells you right there, you're making your money work for you. It's getting recycled through the ATM. And at the end of the day, if you do need that extra cash, that's not a bad problem to have, okay? You have to be creative when you uh, become or you become an entrepreneur or you're into entrepreneurship. Get them invested into a friend's ATM business. As a private investor, guys, as a private investor, he lent them the money and he used the money to fill the ATMs, okay? And he was creating cash flow without actually doing the work. So at the end of the day, how many of you have friends, family members that want to be a passive investor? There you go. Make it a family affair. At the end of the day, that's what it is. I remember I had my stepbrother. I remember I had my sisters. One of my sisters lives in Canada, in Vancouver. And she's like, hey, um, thinking of getting an ATM business, you guys out here yet? And I'm like, no, nah, not yet, but we're working on it. And hey, look, we made it happen, right? It took a year, but we made it happen. So now for all my Canadians, I love Canada. We got you, right? If you want to work with us, okay? All right. And then lastly, guys, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm taking the whole show over here. Again, I'm probably like, dude, shut up. <laughs> location, 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 location. Location is absolutely everything. And for anyone that's watching this right now, and you guys are probably like, how the heck do you guys find location? Isn't it saturated? Everywhere I go, I see an ATM. Here's the thing, guys, okay? If you don't try, how would you know they don't need a replacement? How do you know they're happy with their current uh, supplier, their ATM supplier? I've gone to many locations where the owner literally will go like, oh, the ATM guy. I'd be like, thanks. <laughs> He'd be like, what's up, man? They're like, dude, I've been waiting for one of you other guys here because this guy, he just dropped the ball. He lets this machine go down. He doesn't never fill it. At the end of the day, man, dude, I don't care. I don't even need a part of the surcharge. You can go ahead and just take it as long as you take care of it. It has happened, guys. It has happened. Trust me. There are entrepreneurs that drop the ball all the time, guys. And you guys have opportunity, okay? If you have a good personality, if you like sales, Go out there, put yourself out there and work. Okay, close your mouths, don't get fed, guys. And like I said, you have to learn the process by going through the reps. That's the only way you're going to get good with anything in life is by doing the reps, okay? That's how you're going to be able to learn the big bucks, the structure, the strategies in order to go and scale any business, whether it's your ATM business, whether you're a real estate agent, whether uh, you're in uh, e-commerce, whether you are in um, uh, crypto, whether you're in Forex trading. I don't know if Forex trading is still going on. I don't see any of that getting promoted anymore, but you know what I'm saying? Just anything in life. Okay, guys. So make sure that you guys get the reps in. If you're scared of talking to people, maybe take a class. You have to give up something in life in order to sacrifice uh, for your new life. And I was just telling that to, to another entrepreneur this morning. He called me. He's actually the, the nice fellow who, who is uh, setting up this nice entrepreneur cruise uh, that's uh, out of Miami. No, not in Miami, but Florida in May, guys. If you guys want more information on that, I'll make sure to drop it on the next live or I'll have get them drop it on the next live. We're going to start promoting that heavy, but it's going to be cool. Okay. So anyways, I was talking to him this morning while I was having my coffee and uh, I had told him, I was just like, yeah, man, a lot of people, they just don't want to sacrifice parts of their life in order to give up their old life for their new life. And one thing that I learned, okay. And this is, I'm going to end with this guys. When I was working my nine to five, as hard as it might seem to believe this guys, I was making about a quarter of a million dollars working 60 to 100 hour work weeks, guys, 60 to 100 hour work weeks. Okay. Think about that. 
What type of personal life did I have? What type of um, like family time did I have? I didn't have any family time because it would take me an hour, two hours to actually sit in traffic and go back home. And then what? So I could sit on my five bedroom house so I could sleep for three hours. What type of life is that? Think about that. You're going to get tired. I was tired. I aged like crazy. I went in baby face and law enforcement came out like a man. It was insane. But I'm going to tell you something right now, guys. I gave up all that overtime. I gave up all that overtime to dedicate the extra 40 to 60 hours into my business. That's how serious I was. I dedicated 40 to 60 hours all into my business without any instant gratification, guys. It hurt. My paycheck went from like 12,000 to literally 3,000, guys. Sometimes 2,000. Taxes, California. That's the way they do you. So at the end of the day, what are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice time to build your business? If you are, phenomenal. I salute you. You're one of the rare ones. If not, I always tell people, you always got to invest money to make money. That's just the reality of things. Nothing in life is free, guys. I believe in every single one of you. Anyways, I'm going to let get them go ahead. <laughs> this guy. Oh, the audience is going wild, Paul. Man, <laughs> those are some phenomenal gems, man. That was, that was phenomenal, guys. If you enjoyed what Paul presented, and maybe you want a copy of this training presentation, guys, because I don't know if we're going to post this one. It's, it's, we're going to have some secretive stuff. Comment replay below, meaning that you're like, hey, maybe you didn't have enough time to write down the notes, which is understandable. It's okay. Comment replay below. We'll make sure we get you a copy of this training because I think this is going to be one of those Facebook lives we don't even save on our group because there's some confidential information we are going to announce. This is only live for you guys. Okay. So with that being said, guys, I actually have the next lesson for you. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one, right? Because in case you guys didn't know, I, um, I was involved in crypto for a little bit. I think I still have my ledger here somewhere. But basically, I, I was involved in the crypto industry since uh, 2016. So straight up, I was that guy with a tinfoil hat over my head. I was taking vacations with family. I was that guy saying, guys, 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 I'm telling you, you got to invest in this thing. And everyone's like, man, this guy has, he's crazy. He's always talking about this Bitcoin thing. This is 2016. And if you guys remember, back then it was probably like, I think it was like 500 bucks or 600 bucks a uh, Bitcoin. And that was a Bitcoin. And I was like, man, I missed out. I missed out. It was $200. Well, what was I thinking? I'm an idiot. But I remember seeing in the Bay Area, so in case you guys didn't know, a little bit of history. So Bitcoin was established uh, January 3rd or January 4th. And this was years ago, years ago, guys. It's been around for 14 years now, okay? Bay Area, Silicon Valley. If you guys are familiar, anybody from the Bay Area, shout out Bay Area fans, we're here, all right? So if you're from the Bay Area, you understand that we're crypto forward, we're very tech forward, right? Google's over there, Apple's over there, PayPal, eBay, all the big name companies, Adobe, all this good stuff, okay? So one of the first Bitcoin ATMs ever was actually in Mountain View, California, guys. And I remember I was watching the news. I was like, man, this is cool. I was like, what are these guys talking about? Right. And I remember seeing them start to slowly creep up once in a while. They were very expensive to get into back then. I'm talking about, you're talking about 20 G's to get into it because it was very specialized equipment. Um, it was very unique manufacturers that were making it. It wasn't too popular. Okay. And it was kind of uncharted territories. So banks don't want to work with you to this day. That's still the case, just like cash ATMs because you're competition for them. Okay. So back then I remember I'd see it and it was just something cool. I was like, man, I can scan my wallet. This is craziness. And they were charging a high fee. And I was like, dude, how are these guys charging like 15%? What are they thinking? But now knowing how much money is made in the crypto industry with ATMs, I'm just like, I'm not going to lie, guys. If I knew more back then, it's almost like someone telling you about Tesla. Somebody telling you about Amazon, right? Somebody telling you about, I used to invest in Whole Foods, by the way. That was my, my favorite stock. And then Amazon bought them out. So I knew, like, I was always thinking about these future investments. So with crypto ATMs, man, it is like me telling you about 
the Tesla coming out. I'm like, guys, 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 guys. I get it. It's not that popular. It's not cool to talk about electric vehicles, man. But this guy, Elon, man, he knows what he's talking about. This is how serious this is, guys. So I'm going to break down exactly how you can take advantage of this movement. And I'm not saying it's replacing cash ATMs. They're very complimentary. I'll get to this in a second. But they're usually actually right next to each other. Whenever you see a Bitcoin ATM, it's usually right next to a cash ATM. And that's for a reason. Okay, I'll get into that. And if I don't remember, make sure you comment below. I am monitoring the comments and I will get to your questions. Okay, so with that being said, guys, the five steps I call them to actually get to $10,000 a month in the Bitcoin ATM business. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a hint. It also involves getting into the cash ATM business because they're portfolios, right? You're not just gonna invest all in one stock. And if you do, that's cool, right? more power to you, but realistically, you're gonna have a portfolio. It's the same thing with Bitcoin ATMs. You can go all in in Bitcoin ATMs. We're not saying don't do that, but more than likely you're leaving money on the table because I'm gonna explain to you how this works, right? So Bitcoin ATMs, very simple. You have them at a location, you actually have cash inside of it typically, and crypto is gonna be associated to it. So the crypto is not in the actual machine. Like my, my mom and dad would say like, is the, is the Bitcoin in the machine? No, 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 it's not like that guys, it's digital. Okay, so don't worry about it, it's connected. It's almost like being connected to your bank account. Okay, almost like processing how Paul mentioned it with cash ATMs. So with that being said, you wanna make sure you have the equivalent of a good processor, right? For us, we always recommend Mike. Shout out Mike, if you're watching right now, he's actually gonna be on some live trainings in the future. But when it comes to cash ATMs, you gotta deal with Mike. That's that guy. It's like if you're from Chicago with the old school mafia, you're like, hey, man, who do I talk to get this done? You talk to Mike. He's down the street, right? So Mike's when it comes to actual cash ATMs. With Bitcoin ATMs, it's actually kind of hard. There actually aren't options out there. So what we did was we locked down the best company in the industry, guys. Because at the end of the day, an ATM together, we're all about the best. We're conceited. We like to be the best. And we want the best for our team. We want the best for those watching these lives also. Okay. So when it comes down to it, when it comes to Bitcoin ATMs, you have it at a location, it typically has cash inside of it. It's going to be much more than a actual cash ATM. Okay. And it has crypto associated. So a person will go to your ATM. They'll find it online, typically on Google maps, coin ATM, right? All these different websites. Okay. They're going to go there to buy Bitcoin. So they're going to have cash. And I have, I literally have some loose cash laying around guys. Don't ask me why. So I have some loose cash laying around. I'm going to enter it into my actual machine. So what's going to happen is the typical order volume is about $1,000 or more, okay? So I'll do some math. You're going to charge them about 15 to 20% to use that machine, okay? And I know you're probably thinking like, man, who's going to pay 15 to 20%? But you also got to ask yourself, well, who uses check cashing? Who uses loans? Who gets mortgages? There's always a market for somebody. Just because you don't eat McDonald's doesn't mean you shouldn't sell McDonald's, right? Boom. So with that being said, guys, you're going to go to that machine. You get charged a convenience fee. It's about 15 to 20%. So you, as the Bitcoin ATM owner, you're going to make 150 to $200 off of that transaction. Okay. What we have seen based on our training and experience in the industry, guys, and what I've seen in law enforcement side has been some machines have made over $30,000 a month. But let's keep it real. We want to be realistic, guys. Not every machine is going to do that. Okay. So... In our range, what we see is about $1,000 to $6,000 a month. That's about the conservative range because at the end of the day, we don't want you getting into it with unrealistic expectations. Ask Gianni. He knows personally a machine in the East Coast that makes $100,000 a month. It blew his mind. He was just like, they make how much? But you got to keep it into reality, guys. We're all about having realistic expectations, okay? So when you want to get to that point, you want to get to that $10,000 a month, the $15,000 a month, there's a few different steps, guys. So the first thing is going to be you want to build your foundation. I'm all about having a steady foundation, guys. But before I even get into that, if you guys want, we actually have this exclusive guide that we made. I had to author it. Paul had to proofread it like 10 times because my dyslexia was coming in. But I, I, my crypto knowledge, I had to throw into that actual guide. If you want a copy of this beginner strategy guide for free, it's absolutely free, no gimmicks, nothing like that. Comment, uh, you know what? I don't think we can say crypto. So let's comment BTM below, guys. Comment BTM, one of our team members or myself, I will personally reach out to you and send you a copy of this guide just so you guys have the basics because I know it's hard to take notes during these lives, guys, all right? So you want to have the foundations. So I told you a few different things. That machine's going to be charging about 15 to 20%. It has what, cash? 
it has an actual machine, it has a location, and it has a network connected to it, right? So it's almost like the four pillars of the cash ATM business. So what you want to do is get that squared away. So the machine itself, this is extremely important, guys. Pay attention. You must have a two-way Bitcoin ATM. And what does that mean, Getem? Don't worry. I'm going to answer it for you. That means that customers can buy and sell crypto on your actual machine. And I say crypto for a reason, guys. So I don't want to get you guys confused. But these machines that you should be buying should not just be stuck with Bitcoin. More than likely, they're going to offer Bitcoin right now only, but they have the capability to have other cryptos. And if they don't, you have problems. And the reason why is because when it comes down to crypto, there's a lot of volatility in the market. One day you can be have freaking Litecoin going to like 500 bucks and then it goes to like $10, right? So you don't want people doing transactions on that actual machine and the, the actual volume or the actual price fluctuates very rapidly because what happens by the time that actual price settles or the actual transaction, there could be a wide variety of what that price is going to be. And that can cause you some problems, okay? It causes what's called liquidity problems. So what you want to do is focus on offering stable cryptos, which is Bitcoin at the end of the day. And that's not to get too much into it, but you want to offer the household name, the one grandma knows about. Whenever he talks about crypto, when it's on CNN, Fox, ABC, whatever, they say Bitcoin. They're not talking about everything else, okay? So you want to be what everyone wants to be. They want to buy Bitcoin. They want to buy Bitcoin. They want to buy and sell it too. So when it comes down to it, you have to have the ability to sell on your machine too. And this is extremely important, guys, because the worst thing that could happen to you is you have that machine. It's pretty. It's at a phenomenal location. And then six months from now or a year, a new standard is adopted and all the machines have to have the ability to sell. What are you going to do? You're just going to have an expensive paperweight. That's like having an outdated ATM. That's like having a car that doesn't accept the proper gas. And you're like, well, I can't find a gas station. You know, those, uh, those cars that have like the vegetable oil. I mean, no offense to the people that drive those, but like, where are you going to find a gas station? Okay. So you want to build your foundation, make sure you get the right ATM. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to identify the right type of locations, guys. So this comes up all the time. And I understand guys, when it comes down to the uh, Bitcoin ATM industry, it's very new to a lot of people. I was involved for a while, meaning that I, I understood the legalities, the regulation. I used to actually just read emails and law updates all the time just because I was that type of geek. So just a little bit about this, guys, defining the type, right type of location. The reason I understand the type of location is actually it came from law enforcement, right? So I know this is uh, this might be a, a little, um, I might even have to play the, you know, see the, sometimes law enforcement, they're watching you, right? The FBI is probably like, hey, get them. You can't say anymore, right? So years ago, Young Getum was on patrol in a city. And these this three-letter agency, federal agency, came in the city and they actually took a, a Bitcoin machine, right? And I know what you're probably thinking, like, oh man, the Fed took a machine. Well, it was actually very interesting the reason why they took it. The reason why, and as you guys know this, if you live in the US, the only thing that's certain, the one person you don't lie to is the IRS. So the owner of the machine years ago was not telling the IRS how much they were making. Somehow, some way, the information got out. The bank reported them saying, hey, this guy's making a lot of money. We don't know where it's coming from. They found out it was a Bitcoin ATM, and they ended up taking the machine because he was avoiding taxes. Okay, so not really like the craziest crime when you think about it, right? But of course, me being inquisitive, being on patrol, I got to find out more info. I'm already involved in crypto. I'm talk They're talking about the feds are in town. That's another thing, right? You got to start being like a moth to a flame, start going that way. And then they start talking about they're making a lot of money. So that's, that's all I'm interested in. So I go there, talk to one of the agents. I'm like, hey, you know, like, I just want a little bit of info. Like, how much do you think he was making? He's like, man, I'm gonna put it this way. He like, he's like, coming closer right? Whispering. And they're wearing ray jackets. And here I am with my coffee, like just trying to listen. He's like, that guy was making over $35,000 a month. I was, I was perplexed. I'm like, did you say $35,000? I didn't even think I could save that much in my life. How many of you guys have an extra $35,000 laying around? Back then I didn't. So the person was making more than I had in my savings account and my checking account and in my piggy bank because I still have the piggy bank with a few quarters in a month. Totally blown away. I tried to get into the industry and then I found out, hey, it's actually very hard to get into back then. Now it's changed. We found a way around that. So I started looking at the type of location. It was actually a liquor store. It was in downtown, lots of foot traffic, and the population was very diverse, which is what this comes into, guys. So... When it comes down to BTM locations, you need to pay attention to this right now, okay? 
You want to have locations that are open the longest amount of hours, high density, and urban city is the best, but it doesn't have to be an urban city. So say, for example, you're one of those freeways in California when you're driving to Las Vegas, there's certain gas stations everyone stops at. That's a phenomenal start for BTM, but foot traffic comes into play. But it, you also want typically sometimes cash-driven locations. And the reason why is because you don't want to just focus on the locations that have big transactions. And I'm talking about the ones that do like $1,000 transactions or more. That's cool. That's phenomenal. But you still want to capture that low hanging fruit, meaning that you might have that person that comes in, they see the machine and they're just like, they're just staring. Right. And they're like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And they go to that machine. They have their extra $20. Maybe they have $60 that they pulled out from that cash ATM. They put it in the machine and you've made a profit guys. So you want to be able to capture all that volume. I actually go into in depth because I don't have enough time right now. I have a podcast just recorded very recently. Me and Paul were in actual Vegas recording this that covers exactly who to target with your Bitcoin ATMs to make sure you get four figures a month at least from your location. If you guys are interested in this, if you want a copy of this podcast, we actually posted it online. It's kind of hard to find. So we're going to give it to you. Comment podcast below. Comment podcast. And what that means is one of us or me after this live, I will send you a copy of this podcast. It's phenomenal. I break down who to target, where to target, how much money you can make, everything you need to know about Bitcoin ATMs, guys, because I can't go into it right now. We just don't have enough time. Okay. So after that, you find the right location. Then you want to do is you want to utilize your network. Okay. At the end of the day, guys, you got to ask yourself, your network equals your net worth. So if you're an introvert, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm like that. But if you have no friends, you probably don't got a network and your net worth might be a little lower. Okay. Cause even the most introverted people, they have a network at the end of the day, they may not hang out with them all the time, but they have that network. They have the Rolodex or if you're, you had the, uh, the actual T-Mobile, uh, sidekick back in the day, like Paul, like he used to always talk about, Hey, day five, you guess your network, right? So here's a great example of this guys, utilizing your network to scale very quickly. Okay. So I was in the military. I was in the Marine Corps years ago. I have some close friends from the military and also close friends from law enforcement. Well, I start talking about Bitcoin ATMs. This is recent. And a friend of mine's like, Hey, I actually have these locations in the Bay area. They'd be phenomenal for Bitcoin ATMs. And I'm thinking to myself, you sure? He's like, yeah, my friend's friend has a friend who knows a friend who knows all the managers of all of these locations. I'm like, get out of here. He's like, no, I'm telling you. So boom, location after location after location. He's just like, we can get it here. We can get it here. We can get it here. Guys, I have three Bitcoin ATMs being shipped right now to the Bay Area. Just like that. I was like, hey, I'm not even, I'm not even there. I'm based out of Southern California. I was like, I don't even need to be there because I utilize my network. I'm going to ship my machine to a technician that we're going to contract with. I'm going to have my friend go to the location. They're going to sign the contract. But even if they don't, guess what? I have a remote signature, which we've also finagled. We've actually, we figured this out ATM together for all of our clients. So we have remote signatures, just like how you can sign anything online. We do that for Bitcoin ATMs. But here's the thing. If you're not a part of the right network, you're not going to have access to all this stuff. So you always want to leverage your network guys. All right. So next part, number four, guys, extremely important guys, automate everything you can. Automate, 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 guys. I can't tell you. I mean, listen, guys. Automate, automate, automate. This is extremely important. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys change your own oil? I don't. I'm going to keep it real. I don't change my own oil. I just don't have time. At the end of the day, wouldn't you rather have the professionals do what they can for your business? Think about it. When it comes down to it, why don't you have the professionals focus on what they do so you can focus on what? Leveraging your brain power, all right? When it comes down to it, guys, you have to ask yourself, do you want to focus on the nitty gritty details or do you want to focus on the big picture? Because when it comes down to the Bitcoin ATM business, if you want to scale past four figures, you have to start looking at big picture. You have to look at the trajectory of where you're going. You have to aim where your business is going. Think of it kind of like Duck Hunt back in the day if you guys play that. You're always trying to capture that nice location. But if you're so focused on all these small details, you're not going to have enough time. So you want to stay revenue driven, meaning that if it doesn't have anything to do with making you more money, outsource it, outsource it, outsource it. Because at the end of the day, you want to be leveraging your brain, guys. Pay attention. Anybody can do a nine to five. 
Anybody can do monotonous work, but the thinkers are the ones that thrive. And the reason why you're on this live is obviously because you're a thinker. Obviously, you know, there's something better for you out there, whether it's, you know, maybe you're bored at work, maybe you just want a little more money, or maybe you just want another Lamborghini. Doesn't matter. You want more. So leverage that brain power when it comes down to the BTM business, guys. And then after that, once you've decided to actually get your foundations down, identify the right location, outsource a lot of those responsibilities, guess what? All you have to do is rinse and repeat, guys. All right. Very simple. I got to keep that short and sweet because we're going to run out of time. We're already running over. So let me get to the next lessons, guys. All right. Now let's do this. I'm going to get my uh, presentation up and running right here. Let's see if you guys can see this. Boom. All right. So for this part, guys, I'm a uh, I'm going to actually make this very simple. You know what? I'm not even going to do the presentation yet, guys. I want, I want to cover the basics of this because Paul went over to the cash ATM business. But let me, let me ask you guys a question, right? How many of you guys have been to Las Vegas? I know at least a few of you guys have. And if you don't have to admit it because maybe you're a significant other is there and you can't say it, that's totally fine, guys. But when it comes down to it, guys, this is the thing. When you go to Las Vegas, don't you like to double your money? At the end of the day, you're going there to make some money. So if you're excited, guys, how you can double your profit in the ATM business, guys, and you're excited, you're like, hey, I just want to treat this like Las Vegas. I don't want to get the industry average. I want to make more money on my cash ATMs. Comment double time below. I want to see that you guys are actually paying attention because at the end of the day, I know it's late, but your guys are paying attention to make money in your business. So comment double time below. Let me see what's actually going on, how many guys want to actually make money off your ATMs, right? So with that being said, guys, let me cover this. When it comes down to the ATM business, the little known secret is the average revenue in the actual ATM business is about $150 a month. Realistically, that's what it is. And that's if you do it on your own, if you try to figure everything out, which is, which is okay, but you're going to run into mistakes. And typically, because you're not going to know how to target the right locations, you're going to make about $150 a month. That's not the case with us. And the reason why we were able to basically double the industry average is because we have figured out the secrets. What we did was we took advantage of everything we're saying. It's not do as I say, not as I do. We actually do exactly what we preach. So we thought to ourselves, guys, how can we help everyone out to actually focus on the fundamentals of the business so they can focus on the trajectory and we can make it simpler, faster, and easier for everybody? right? So came up with a few ideas for you guys, right? To keep it simple, the things that have actually worked for us, because at the end of the day, I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm not going to give you tax advice, but as an established entrepreneur who has done not too bad, I can tell you what worked for me for you to replicate it, right? So when it comes down to the ATM business, guys, the first way to increase traffic, increase, I actually gave it away, increase the revenue of your location is you want to drive traffic to your location. And what that means is, you want more people going to that ATM or at least the area of that ATM, okay? So what that looks like is, it's very simple. Incentives, 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 incentives. And what I mean by that is this, your merchant or the location you're placing your ATM at, they have to have an incentive to have your ATM perform well. Whether that's they're saving money on credit card processing fees, whether that's they get a little piece of the cut, which is probably the best way because at the end of the day, you should treat it like the, the saying I learned in Espanol. For all my primos out there, todos comemos. What does that mean? Everybody eats. You don't want that business owner being hungry. You want to make sure they get paid. So I know it's not the most popular opinion, but I always like to pay my merchants because they always have an incentive. At the end of the month, they get that, pet, that check and they're like, get them. We're going to get some more people to use your ATMs. All right. So merchant incentives, the way you can do this is you can do a uh, sliding scale deal. What does that mean? Maybe you don't want to do a fixed rate. So what you say is like, hey, you know what? This is what we're going to do, Mr. Merchant. Jeff, the more people you drive to this ATM, the more money you make. And this is how we're going to do it. From zero to 50 transactions, I'm going to pay you X, Y, Z. From 51 to 100, I'm going to pay you this much. But once we break that 100 barrier, because think about that, guys. 100 transactions a month at ATM, that's charging about $350. That's $350. Once we break 150, 100 transactions, I'm going to be willing to pay you $1.25 per transaction. So right off the bat, you're going to be making $125 a month minimum. 
So they're thinking in their head like, man, and what do I got to do? It's like nothing. Just tell people to use the ATM. So what are they going to do? Anytime somebody comes in like, hey, well, you can, I mean, I got to pass the credit card fee on to you. But if you want, you can use that ATM. Or they're going to offer different incentives. They're going to say, hey, you know, if you do this and do that and you pay in cash, I'd be willing to offer you this. Or they're going to offer different promos that incentivize people to use the ATM. Like, hey, $20 cash for this. So everyone's like, man, I didn't bring a 20. Or you say $30 cash for this item only on Friday. So when everyone comes, they're going to say, dang it, I didn't bring enough cash. And they say, well, that ATM's over there. So you have to have ways to incentivize the merchant. And then in 2023, you have to focus on online advertising, guys. It is extremely important because when it comes down to it, we are in the era of digital advertising. The more eyes, the more money you make. The most valuable currency in this generation is going to be attention. It's not oil. It's not sugar. It's not health. It's nothing. It is attention, guys. They will pay you in this era to have people capture attention. Why do you think the Super Bowl commercials cost so much and they're the best commercials? Because they have millions upon millions of people watching. So what you want to do is drive advertising for your location. You could also do this to double down and get locations too. You can run Facebook ads. You can run Google ads. You want to put yourself on different mapping software. Think of this. Whenever you want to take advantage of profiting off your ATM, think of yourself as a person that's going to use the ATM. How am I going to know that ATM's there? I'm going to check Google Maps. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to check Yelp when I'm looking at a restaurant. I'm going to find out they're cash only. And it says in the comment section, ATM inside. So you want to be creative in what you do. And then you want to do signage. And what that means is if somebody's walking by, you want to take advantage of that low-hanging fruit, like I keep saying, guys. Because when your cash ATM is right next to a Bitcoin ATM, you want to have an ATM inside sign. So when they walk by to get cash, which is what I've seen with one of our Bitcoin ATMs, they pull out $100 in cash and they look at the Bitcoin ATM and they're just staring at it. I'm like, huh, that wasn't there before. And they use the Bitcoin ATM. So now you're doing infinity banking. You're literally doing infinity banking. And what that means is you're profiting off somebody withdrawing money from their bank account and putting it into your Bitcoin ATM. So now you're even tripling the profits you can have, guys. But after that, once you decide, hey, I'm going to drive more traffic to my location, this is what you want to do. You want to capture momentum. And the way you do this, guys, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. There's a saying, you want to capture the lightning in the bottle or you just want to capture the momentum. So once you have some action, you want to keep going because it's like a snowball effect. You know that sm snowball's coming down that hill? It starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Treat your business like that. Don't be that rock in front of your business. Don't be that tree branch. Don't slow yourself down. Don't listen to anybody else. Don't listen to the mediocre people that say, hey, take your time. And no, 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 no. You want to explode. Treat that bad boy like it's a race. So the way you do that is by referrals. You install that machine. Don't stop there. Don't smell the roses. Don't pat yourself on the back. Immediately go to work. You place it in there. You say, hey, Jeff, what's going on? Appreciate it. Can't wait to build this relationship with you. But let me ask you this. Hey, do you know anybody that would want to take advantage of an ATM? Actually, I do. Get them. My sister owns a barbershop. Really? Yeah. I'm like, hey, why don't you put me in contact with her? We can work something out too. That works out for everybody. Oh, yeah. And you get a number. Right off the bat, you have two locations with the price of one. Some of our best some of our best success stories, right? These two guys, we actually have a live that if you want, I can, we can just comment below. And man, those guys have over, I think, 15 locations. Andrew Francis and his business partner, who I actually met in college, man, they're doing phenomenal. 80% of their locations came from word of mouth. They literally captured momentum. They, they literally took what I said and ran with it. No, no pun intended for football, right? But they literally ran with it and they said, referral, referral, referral. And they got like eight locations right off the bat, back to back to back to back to back. They're on a live talking about this. You have to capture referrals. That's the way you capture momentum because at the end of the day, closed mouths don't get fed, as we always say, guys, all right? And the third way, guys, pay attention, right? So this is going to be, uh, man, this is going to, this is going to capture a lot of heat guys.